just by a little bit of way of introduction, let me just share with you that oftentimes as a preacher, the Lord will give you a message kind of like last week when you preach about nine facts of hell, and he just uh, really gives you fired up and stirs your heart. And and, uh, those those are easy messages to preach because God really gets you fired up. And other times it's a blessing to be able to preach to God's people to encourage them. We are supposed to edify and build up. But uh, probably, and I'm not saying this to make myself something more than I am. I, I realize who I am. I'm a sinner saved by the grace of God. Uh, I'm the chief of sinners, unqualified, uneducated. I have no right to stand here. It's only by God's grace and mercy, so it's nothing about me. But I would say probably very few people understand outside of, of Brother Gary, who's pastored a church for over 10 years, understand the, the, the spiritual responsibility and pressure that comes along with it. And, and at times God gives you a message that is, that is so real and, and, and near and dear to you, that probably, again, the only one that will understand it is someone who's been there. My heart is very heavy today. It's affected my countenance. It's affected uh, even my overall how I feel. But it's spiritual. I understand that. And I want to say something on the the forefront of this message. I think this is so vital, and I I think the reason I'm feeling the way I am is because it's so important. And I'm fighting a spiritual battle that's much bigger than I, and so are you. And I understand here at this church, and I praise God for it, I have perfect liberty. I feel liberty on all things, and that's because of God's people. But this message is not geared towards anyone, but just the very dire need of my heart that God's laid on me, the direction of our country, where we're at, and I hope you receive it in such that manner. For time's sake, what we didn't read is the background of this chapter here in Acts chapter 3. There was a man who was lame from his mother's womb. And what happens is that man is healed and all of a sudden all these people are marveling that this man was healed and then Peter addresses those Jews there. Why do you marvel? It's through the name of Jesus Christ and the faith that, that this man is healed. And then he begins to preach against those Jews and declare unto them their folly, how they had crucified the just one and murdered the Lord Jesus Christ. As well, oh, You compare Scripture to Scripture, but he, he tells them, of their folly. And again, I hope as we as Christians, as I kind of alluded to, we come to church for the reason from the instruction from the Word of God. You know, oftentimes in church service where I'm sitting there listening and preaching, or even when I'm in preparation to deliver a sermon, sometimes I can just say, Amen, glory to God, thank God for Jesus Christ. And I hope you can too. That's the purpose of preaching, is to glorify Jesus Christ. But you know, sometimes, and I have to admit, more often than I would like to admit, I have to say, woe is me. See, the Bible is not a, just a book to make you feel good. It's a book to instruct you and to correct you and to rebuke you in all ways. And we see that's exactly what happens here with Peter. It said, by the mouths of the prophets. And again, I've told you before, what God has chosen, He's chosen the foolishness of preaching. God has called preachers to preach, and I understand being the position why sometimes when issues and subjects come up, why preachers don't? Because there's a resistance, there's a battle going on. But listen to me, a preacher is not called to make you feel good. A preacher is not called to only preach on things that you want, but a preacher is preached or called to preach the whole counsel of God. Despite how people think or feel, if they like it or don't like it, now we need to strive to do it with a sincere heart and a broken heart to help people and not hurt them. The Bible talks about how the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. What we see is those Jews being God's people. God would deliver them out of Egypt. He would feed them manna. He would give them water from a rock. He would part the Red Sea. And soon you find them what? Murmuring and complaining. You think to yourself, how could they do that? And all of a sudden, God reminds you of all your murmuring and complaining. And we have to say, woe was me. How could I do that? So what I'd like to do is draw some areas of folly from these Jews and apply it to Christians and see what we can learn. Folks, we're facing a very important time. We have the elections on November 6th. 
Now, I know what the world says. That's taboo. A preacher's not supposed to talk about elections. Again, I could care less what the government says. The government has not called me to preach. The Lord Jesus Christ has called me to preach. Now, listen to me. I'm not here to tell you who to preach for. I'm telling you how to, how to, or I'm sorry, how to, who to vote for. But I'm telling you how a Christian should vote. It's real simple. Erase what party they're from. Ask them where they stand when it comes to life. If they're, uh, if they're for abortion, then a Christian shouldn't vote for them. If they're pro-life, then guess what? You got my vote. Where are you on the things of marriage? Are you for destroying what God calls marriage? And are you for gay marriage? Then guess what? They don't get a Christian's vote. If you're for traditional marriage, then you get the Christian's vote. I'm not telling you the party to, uh, to vote for. I'm telling you based off the principles of the Word of God how to vote. And again, a lot of Christians, as you all are now, will say amen to that. But, can I tell you there's something else that we're going to be voting on November 6th. It's the legalization, the recreational use of marijuana. And can I tell you, I'm going to make a statement, and I hope you hear me out, that if you're a Christian, you're in great folly for voting yes for that. And I understand. You listen to me. You know the only way it's going to pass? Is if Christians vote yes. There is churches on every corner of Detroit and throughout Lincoln Park and Allen Park. We truly make up a vast majority. But Christians, this is why my heart are so heavy. Christians are going to cast their vote yes for recreational marijuana November 6th. And can I tell you, hopefully by the preaching of the Word of God, you today will see your folly. In that. I'm telling you why. I'm going to go through it. So stay with me for the Word of God. Now, why would that happen? How could a Christian vote yes for the recreational use of marijuana? The same reason that the Jews crucified Jesus Christ. You say, what is that? Because of the lack of knowledge. Look at verse 17. Look at verse 17. Acts chapter 3, verse 17. Peter writes here and he says, or he says here, he says, And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as also your rulers. That word want means to know or to be aware. What Peter is saying, he says, I know that through ignorance ye did it. The reason you had Jesus Christ crucified, you didn't know who he was. Your rulers didn't recognize who he was. And it was your ignorance that you said, crucify him. You know why Christians are going to vote yes on November 6th to recognize marijuana? Because of their ignorance. And they don't understand the whole matter. And what they've done is they've heard bits and pieces that are propagated, which I'll talk to you about, from the left, from the same liberals that you'll stand against. Is the same ones trying to get you to vote yes on November 6th. And the scores of Christians are going to vote yes because of their ignorance on the matter. You know, the truth is, and this is where we need to be gracious, a lot of Christians in the day and age we live in, they worship God in ignorance. They do things in ignorance. They're justified in their mind. Is this is a little example. We did, a, we did that study last Sunday on Santa Claus, right? You know how many Christians came up and said, I've never heard any of that before. You know why? Through their ignorance. They just went along to get along. And this is what we do in our culture and country. they never seen all the comparisons of Santa Claus compared to Jesus Christ and how He is stealing the attributes and glory of Him. Through their ignorance, they did it. And again, that's why God calls a preacher, to shed light on these matters. So therefore, you're no longer ignorant when it comes to these things. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says in Luke chapter 12, verse 40, For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. Folks, can I tell you, you're setting yourself up when you come to Bible-believing church. <laughs> you're ruining yourself. Because when the light's given to you, you can no longer claim ignorance. Now you're dealing with rebellion despite what you've been told. You can claim ignorance before. But now when you know the truth of certain matters and certain subject, now you've got to go to God and say, I don't care. I'm still going to deal with it. And so that's my job, is to make you guilty before God 
or for you to get right with God. All right? For the lack of knowledge. Now, let's just talk about some things, and again, we'll get to the motive. This is very a very topical subject, but it's a dire subject that needs to be preached about and against. And trust me, I don't care if any other preacher is not going to stand against this issue. I will stand against this issue. You know, I used to admire about Billy Sunday. He would go in and preach in towns and bars would shut down. You know what I, used, I, I admire about uh, Chrissy's former pastor, Brother Dilbert Terry, Lord willing, he'll be with us this year. I think up until 2015, and he can correct me uh, if I'm wrong on the exact dates, but every year he still went out and preached against alcohol, and they had a dry county up until 2015 or 16. You know why? So men would stand for God when no one else would stand. So here's, out of ignorance, the Christians told... And it's propagated. Well, I'm voting yes because it's natural. It's natural. Can I, can I inform you now to actually give you some facts about it? The marijuana plant has been drastically changed from its natural state. It is no longer like it used to be. You know, back in the 60s with the hippies and all that scene of smoking marijuana, back then if you tested a plant, all this is documented, but Christians don't care about the true facts. Back then if you smoke it, it contained on average of 1% THC. 1% in the 60s. They've monitored the plant because of all the, how we now raise it and all the things we've done to it. And now on average, you know what that same plant is that it was natural now contains? On average, 12%. On average now. 12 times the natural occurrence of THC because of what man has done to it. Do you realize in Colorado where it is now legal, you can't find a marijuana plant that contains 12% THC. You know what it is on average now? 30% THC. That is no longer its natural use. No longer its natural state is manipulated by man. 30% increase from how God had designed that plant. You're no longer dealing with the quote-unquote natural plant. You know what the even scary thing is? And these are facts from America. Because quote-unquote it's natural, there is no laws governing its potency. None whatsoever. So you know what they're doing there? They're buying gummy bears by the masses. They're spraying them with potent THC. They're covering them with sugar. They're packaging them in the same type of packages that a child would get of gummy bears. And there's no laws to tell you how much THC is in it. That's in Colorado of America because a bunch of Christians said, vote yes to its recreational use. You know what those gummy bears now contain? Before I go there, you know what the, the medical field, we'll talk about medical marijuana in a minute, because again, that's just another farce. You know, what the, you know what the medical field says if you are going to take medical marijuana? The max for adult is 10 milligrams of THC. The max. You know what those gummy bears contain? Between 40 and 200 milligrams of THC. Between 40 and 200. They make soda that's infused with THC. You know how much one can of soda has? 350 milligrams of THC in one soda. And again, because it's natural, Christians will vote yes for its recreational use. Beyond that, there's something that's emerged that's really scary that a lot of Christians probably don't even know. They now have discovered and learned if they take all the stems and the stalks of that marijuana plant, they put it in a PVC pipe, and they shoot it full of butane or propane to force that THC oil out of those stems, at the end comes a clear, clear liquid substance of pure THC. They let it crystallize. And now listen to me, in Colorado, it's called a rock of THC. You know how you smoke it? Just like you do crack out of a crack pipe. Or you put it on top of an e-cigarette where it's superheated and vaporizes. They say from that, you know how the potency of the concentrate from that is, of THC level? 
85 to 95 percent THC. Again, the natural uses, well, in natural plants, 1 percent. They say the amount of a pinhead will knock an adult unconscious. The, static, the, the facts that are coming out of Colorado is concentrate use will take over for smoking the, the leaf itself because there's a greater high in it. They now put it in these e-cigarettes because they superheat this, this THC rock and they vape it into their lungs. You can't smell it. There's no breathalyzer test you can do to test for it. And they're ingesting uh, THC levels of 85 to 90% t- 95% THC. Why? Because in Colorado they voted yes to rec- recreational use of marijuana. There's a story that will just break your heart. There's a, a man out there, his name's Keith. They call him a miracle worker because he works interventions for years and years and years with drug addicts, heroin addicts. These were his words, a man who's devoted his life to it. He said, I would rather try to perform an intervention on someone who's been shooting up heroin for years than I would to try to perform an intervention on someone who's been taking marijuana concentrate for six months. He said they're harder to reach than a heroin addict. He said in six months. He said I ring the proverbial doorbell, but nobody's home. I can't reach them after six months of use of concentrate THC. There's many of studies, some of these things, I'll just give you a fact. There was a study published in the Lancet in March 2015 that there's a clear connection with psychosis and the use of high-potency THC. Now, here's the scary thing. Remember those percentages I just told you? The natural plant plant is 1%. Then it went up to now because of what we've done to it is 12%. And in Colorado, it is now 30%. And then when you deal with these concentrates, they are 85 to 95%. The study that links psychosis with marijuana, you know what, at what percent they did that study? At only 16%. They haven't even done studies with marijuana over 16% THC. And yet Christians are going to vote yes for the recreational use that, listen to me, is going to destroy a nation. And it's going to do it here in Lincoln Park. You think we have a drug epidemic now? Wait till if they pass it and they legalize it, the outcome of it. Because a Christian wants to use the excuse that it's natural. Now here's the verse they'll use. Listen, you won't turn there because i got so much to go through. Only 17 pages of notes today. They'll show you Genesis chapter 1, verse 12, where the Bible says, And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. They say, see, God brought all those herbs up and there was good. You know what they don't read to you? Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 says this. That, by the way, that was in the garden. That was prior to the fall. You know what he says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which thou commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. You know those natural plants? They're cursed. And I'm telling you, what this is is a straw man argument. It's a straw man argument to say it's natural, therefore we should, we should vote Yes. Listen to me, there is tons of plants that are natural, tons of things that are natural that you won't touch. Just because it's natural, and we're going to get to the medical side in a moment, just because it's natural does not mean it's good. Do you know the hemlock plant is natural also? You know what it will do if you smoke it or ingest it? It will kill you. You know, the poisonous mushroom is natural also, and if you ingest it or smoke it, it will kill you. So the fact that it's natural means nothing. God didn't tell you in the Bible because it's natural to go smoke it. It's just a straw man argument. By the way, you know, opium is natural too. Do you realize the epidemic we have all across this country because of a natural substance? I don't know if you know this, but in the history, because it was natural, they used to have what they called opium dens. You know what opium den was? 
where you could come in and buy this natural plant and smoke it. That was until the late 1800s when I realized what a bad idea that was and they outlawed it. You know what they used to do with opium? They used to mix opium and hemlock, two natural plants to help with uh, assisted suicide. The opium would get them high, the hemlock would kill them. Again, just because it's natural does not mean it's right. Let's talk about the second straw man. Well, it's medical benefits. Everyone's seen on YouTube the one guy who had Parkinson's disease, he was shaking so much, smoked a joint, and he quit shaking. Therefore, it's good for everyone. Two things about this, and I'm going to get into the medical facts. Not just the idea that the media is propagating the medical facts of marijuana. First of all, your vote on November 6th is not for medical marijuana. Your vote for November 6th is recreational use for marijuana. I will tell you I am a supporter from the pulpit of medical marijuana, true medical marijuana. There I have it. It's called, what's it, Meridol? Marinol. You know what that is? It's marijuana in a pill regulated by the doctors, and it tells you how much THC you can get. It's no different than what they did with opium, with morphine, right? So I'm not against it. And we do understand there is medical benefits from it, but let me get to that in a minute, where they truly come from. Again, same thing we've seen in opium. There's a medical benefit from it. I am glad they can give you a narcotic when you have to have surgery or pain. That's a blessing. I think anyone would be foolish to say, you know, just because it does this, then we can't take it. No, there, there is medical benefits to marijuana, just like there's medical benefits to, uh, to opium. All right, now, here's the thing. Back to marijuana. There's over, I think, over 100 or maybe 200 chemicals found in the marijuana plant. The two that we really need to focus on are THC and CBD. THC is the substance that gets you high. CBD is the substance that has medical benefits. There is not a single medical benefit from THC. Every medical benefit comes from the chemical called CBD. You know what the problem with CBD? It doesn't get you high. So there is a medical benefit, but it does not come from THC. Now just keep that in mind in a moment. We'll talk more about that. But let's talk about the true effects of marijuana since people want to raise, well, there's medical benefits for it. Here's the true facts. They, they know for sure it's detrimental to the brain if someone smokes or ingests marijuana until the brain quits developing. They say that is probably around 25 years old. Do you realize? I don't know the exact age, but I guarantee it's no higher than 21 that what we're going to vote on on November 6th for recreational use. In Canada, they pass it at 19. Despite all the doctors saying, if you do this, you're going to affect the development of the brain of generations to come. Because at 19, they can legally do this, and it's going to destroy their brain. That is medical fact. That's not this preacher's opinion. And they go on to say, a study in the Journal of International Neuropsychology reported that after even a month of monitoring abstinence, or they quit using marijuana, Adolescents who've used it, they show uh, deficits in their brain waves when they study their brains. And it also goes on to say that they never come back. Again, there's study after study that shows that any use before the age of 25 affects the development of one's brain. There also is a huge link, and I believe it's a little more than just a, a correlation. I believe it's an effect, but it's not proven in science yet. But they know this. That marijuana use is, is tied closely with mental health disorders like schizophrenia. Now, what the medical profession is willing to say is they say it exacer- exacerbates those known conditions. I say it creates those known conditions. Because listen to me, there's people that do that and they have all these psychosis and when they quit marijuana, they no longer have psychosis. But nevertheless, it is a known fact that use of marijuana is linked to schizophrenia Psychosis, hallucinations, depression, anxiety. That is the medical facts behind it. You want to talk about medical use? Those are the medical facts behind marijuana. For a long time, again, 
the world, and we're going to talk about who's propagating all this nonsense, said marijuana is not addictive. You know what the science now says? That's absolutely untrue. They've done uh, tests in rats that show that them that have been given THC are now more subject to other addictive drugs if they're given them than ones who never had it. They also go on there. What happens, this is common sense use with any drug use, the body releases a chemical called serotonin. When your body, when you get happy or excited, your body release, releases it, and it knows that you're happy, and you feel, listen to me, satiated or pleased or satisfied. What they now are doing with the studies because of MRIs and everything with the brain, like just like any other drug, if you smoke marijuana and just marijuana, because you have an overload of serotonin, your body quits producing serotonin and it shuts down. And therefore, when someone tries to quit smoking marijuana, there is no serotonin. And they feel depressed and have anxiety and they even have suicidal thoughts, and therefore the only thing that makes them happy is smoking more marijuana because the body has quit producing serotonin. In 2012, a clinical psychologist out of Duke University showed that those who began smoking marijuana heavily in their teens, listen to me, lost eight points of their IQ to never come back. Eight points is dumbing down a whole generation. Eight points lower on their, IQ, on their IQ test. Folks, there's a reason why the older generation in here, you know what you used to call them? Potheads. You know why? Because the name rings true. Their burnouts, their brain is damaged, their IQ is lower, their social skills are not there. They're potheads because of the effect on the brain. There's other medical diagnoses. One is intense nausea and vomiting for habitual users. They can't quit vomiting. They can't, can't quit throwing up. Again, the mental effects is hallucination, paranoia, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, and thoughts, thoughts of suicide documented from the medical profession for those who use marijuana. You're not sold on this issue? Buy a book by a man named Ben Court. His book is entitled, you can get it today on PDF on Kindle for $6.95. It's called Weed Incorporated. He's studied this for 30, 40 years. Now back to the natural use. Remember I told you? About 1% in its natural use. Here's the interesting thing about marijuana. In its natural use, back in the day before it was engineered by man, if you want to get it, the THC levels was about 1%, and the CBD levels were about 1%. Now here's the amazing thing about that natural plant. You know what the CBD levels do in their natural state? They counteract the hallucination effect of THC. It gets rid of the effect of getting high. But you know what? No one goes out there and just picks a plant and eats it. What they do is they dry it out. And those THC levels, from my research I can see, they stay, but the CBD effects diminish greatly. In God's natural state, they countered each other. So you could get the medical benefit from it without getting high. So again, that's why there is benefit for the medical profession to go in there and see how they can better subtract the CBD out of the plant without the THC. But again, God had designed it in such a way. Never forget, in 1960, the marijuana plant in its natural state was 1% THC. Currently across the world, it is 12%. In Colorado, where it's legal, it's 30%. In the concentrate form, it is 85 to 95%. God never intended it for that. But man, in his inventions and witty ways, he finds a way to use it. Now, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, For the love of money is the root of all evil. You want to know why? You have organizations like the Drug Policy Alliance that are propagating it. You want to know why you constantly hear none of these facts, but you hear that it's natural. You show the one video of a guy with Parkinson's, you know why? There's a man that I would say probably every Christian in here who's really sincere about serving God, who studies the Bible, stands opposed to. It's the same man who's trying to destroy this country with socialism, with doing away with marriage, with doing away with your gun rights. You know who that man's name is? George Soros. You know what George Soros has done? He's given $100 million 
to the Drug Alliance to legalize marijuana. You want to vote with George Soros? Go ahead. I stand in opposition because I know the facts. I know the effects. And I understand. Listen to me. I'm the one who has to preach the funeral. I'm the one who has to go to that mother and explain to her why her son's dead. I see the effect in our society. But the truth is, so do you. And again, they did this because of their ignorance. And Christians, too, will do it because of their ignorance. In regards to big money, in California, it's going to profit $3.5 billion. That's the big business in 2018. In 2019, they're going to sell $5 billion worth of marijuana. You know how much the state's going to profit from that? $1 billion in taxes collected from marijuana use. Do you not see why they're pushing it? It's the love of money. They don't care about your kids. They don't care about your grandchildren. All they care about is the love of money. In Colorado, there's one part of Colorado. Listen to me, I hope this hits home. There's one part of Colorado that's a little bit harder up socially, economically. And for every 47 people, there's a pot shop there. Every 47 people. You think you see liquor stores now. Wait till they legalize marijuana. We'll see them on Dick's Highway. We'll see the teenagers walking in there. It will affect a whole generation. It's coming to this town if Christians don't wake up to what's really going on. Effects of marijuana. Here's the facts in Colorado. 20% of people who smoke marijuana on a regular basis make less than $25,000 a year. Those from the range from 25,000 to 50,000, 12% of them are habitual marijuana users. You know why? Listen to me. If you can't see this, you're blind. It's called the anti motivational syndrome. You know what they can't get the youth to do anymore? They can't get them to be men, to go get a job, to move out of mommy and daddy's house, to, to take responsibility from self. You know what they're doing? They're getting high in the basement and playing Call of Duty. Amen. Glory to God. That is the truth of this generation. And it's a fact of marijuana. I guarantee it. You start looking at people who don't have their life together that is not living. I'm talking about young men right now for a moment. You know what the most of them all have in common? They're sitting back smoking marijuana. And it's destroying a whole society of people. Anti-motivational syndrome, as the doctors call it. So there's, they did it because of lack of ignorance. Folks, that's just in a small time frame of the effects of marijuana. I would say this, you're no longer ignorant about the fact. Now you have to go before God and say, Lord, can I do this with an honest heart before you and support this? But not only do I want to show you the lack of ignorance, look at their lack of accountability. Again, look in Acts chapter 3. Look at verse 13. Acts chapter 3, verse 13, the Bible says, The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified His Son, Jesus. Now watch this. Whom ye delivered up and denied. Him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the Just One, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. You know what the Jews' problem was? Lack of accountability. Not only their ignorance, a lack of accountability for what they did. Let me ask you a question. Who's the one that scourged Jesus Christ? Was it the Romans or the Jews? It was the Romans. Who's the one who beat Jesus Christ? Was it the Romans or the Jews? It was the Romans. Who's the one that put the nails in His hand and the nails in His feet and hung them on the cross? Was it the Romans or the Jews? It was the Romans. Yet, you know what Peter says? Ye did it! It was you! You're guilty! You know why they were guilty? They had a choice in the matter. Look, it tells you right there in verse 13. It says, uh, verse 13, look towards the end there. Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let 
him go. Pilate said, this man's innocent. He's just, I find no fault in him. Yet the Jews said, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Then, then Pilate said, okay, we'll crucify him. So you know who the charge lays against? Those, those Jews. Listen to me. You might want to run from it. You might want to deny it. When you vote yes and your voice goes out in support, you know what you get to carry with that? Everything else that comes along with it. All the consequences. Those lives that are destroyed. That young boy who commits suicide. That home that is wrecked. Because you said, yes, I vote for it. Therefore, God's going to lay it to your charge of the outcome just like He did to those Jews. You willing to take that risk? You want all the, 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 all the effects that come with it? Then vote yes, but I'm telling you, you won't stand before God guiltless. You'll be guilty because you said yes to it, just like those Jews did. And they're the one. But they lacked accountability. Even though they're not the one who whipped Jesus, although they're not the one that put the crown of thorns on Him, although they're not the one that crucified Him, Peter said, you're guilty because you were asked. And you said yes. You know, oftentimes, God gives the government, what they, or the people, what they deserve and what they want. You know the story with King Saul? The nation of Israel, Samuel's getting old. And the, the Jews said, give us a king like every other nation. And Samuel was grieved in his heart. He tried to warn them. Just like I'm trying to warn you today, don't do that. That's not what we're supposed to do. And they wouldn't listen to him. They wouldn't listen to the preacher. And therefore, God said, Samuel, don't worry. They haven't denied you. They denied me. You're not sinning against this preacher because of my desires. You're sinning against a holy God when you go against what his desires are. And he's going to lay it to your charge. We won't turn there for time's sake. But you know what Acts chapter 7, what Stephen says to those Jews? He didn't just say you killed the just one. He said you're the murderer of the just one. You've murdered Jesus Christ because you said, yes, this is what we want. Christian, I'm trying to show you, you're going to be accountable for all of everything else that comes with your yes vote for it. So you can say it's natural, you can say it's medical benefit, but you're going to weigh the cost of everything else that goes along with it. So what's the impact? Again, we don't have to look far. You look to Colorado. It's the increased use of, of the youth up by 74% has increased with the youth since they've legalized recreational use. Drug expulsions were up 62% since they legalized it. You want those laid to your charge? Again, I told you one of the biggest problems it's just like they did with cigarettes back in the day. Who did they market to with cigarettes? Children. That's why the cigarette companies got sued. You know who they're marketing to in Colorado? You know why they put them in gummy bears and soda? Because they're marketing to children. You want that child to ingest marijuana because now it's recreational use? Do you realize in Colorado, ER visits are up because of marijuana overdose by eight? hundred percent since they legalized recreational use again the jews didn't want to take accountability i want to talk just a little bit more and we're almost done with some of these things i told you that high doses of marijuana and its potency are linked to hallucination and paranoia but Christians will parrot with the hair on TV and say, well, no one's ever died from marijuana. It's less harmful than alcohol. Can I give you the reality? No one's died from a cigarette either. They die of the effects of the cigarette. It's called cancer. And when you say no one's died from marijuana, you don't know the facts. You know what the facts are? Many have hallucinated and killed themselves or killed others while high on only marijuana and marijuana alone. Read the story of Richard Kirk. You know what he said in his defense trial after he murdered his wife? It was the marijuana that made me do it. I was high out of my mind. Why don't you read the story of Sally Schindel as she stood there and read the letter as she held it up. 
about her son who battled a long time with marijuana. And he took his own life. You know what, she's, you know what he, that letter that he, uh, she held up that he wrote and he left for his mother to find? Here's his words. You can argue with him. You can argue with her. My soul is already dead. Marijuana killed my soul, but plus ruined my brain. And he took his life because of marijuana. So just like cigarettes, they won't kill you, but their effects will. You're not going to necessarily overdose like you are on heroin, but its effects can kill you. Christian, do you really want some of these children that you see running around one day to be able to walk into a store where they can buy marijuana recreational use? And then here in Michigan, they come to the point where they're selling concentrates and that little boy who used to sit in these pews goes and takes his life because you voted yes for it? It's a lack of accountability. I'm telling you, you're going to have a hard time just before a holy God while you voted yes for something that's destroying the youth and nations and states. Why don't you Google names like Daniel Juarez, Christian Kirk, Luke Goodman, John O'Brien, and the list goes on and on and on. We're all dead because of marijuana. Again, it's misinformed. You're listening to George Soros trying to pass something for money to destroy this nation. But just like the Jews, Christians will deny accountability. They'll say, yep, preacher, I know everything you say, but it's not me doing it. It's them doing it. Well, it wasn't the Jews who put those nails in, but God, through His inspired Scripture, said, you're a murderer. You're guilty. This is what you want. God, through His inspired Scripture, said, listen, Samuel, this is what they want. And God gave it to them. They were guilty. The impact of driving, 62% increase of accidents since marijuana has been, rec- been approved for recreational use. Over 100 people have died in 2015 related to marijuana use. And I'm going to conclude. And I'm ending right at 12, so I'm impressed. Not only it's because of their ignorance, not only because they won't take accountability, but you know why Christians will vote yes? Because they lack responsibility. Look at verse 18 and 19 and we're done. This was the conclusion he said. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all the prophets that Christ should, ha- should suffer, He has so fulfilled. What's the solution? Verse 19. Repent ye, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. This message is to Christians. I don't think anyone in here would maliciously want to harm any child. But I think there's a lot of folks that are ignorant on the matter. But listen to me, you've been given enough light at least to go forth and research. You've been given enough light to at least go forth. But here's the thing, just like those Jews, you know what Christians are? They're stiff-necked, they're stubborn, they're set in their own ways, and they've got their mind made up. So you know what they won't do? They won't repent. They won't change their mind on the issue. They're going to go forth November 6th and they're going to do what they want. And my message to you as the preacher that God told me here is repent, have a grieved heart, turn your ways, turn to God and seek Him on the matters. Here's my warning and I'm done. I promise you, as sure as I stand here, if Michigan legalizes the recreational use of marijuana, we will see its downward effects for years It will affect this church. It will affect some child passing through these doors. It may be mine. It may be Brother DJ's. It may be Sister Barry's. It will affect somebody. You know how you know? You already know someone it's affected. And here's the last thing, and I'll conclude. Show me one preacher that you thought ever did anything for God. Show me one lady who we read about in her stories of her faith and how she could stay overseas as her husband was killed. Name me one person who just smoked marijuana and did anything from God. You know, we have a whole generation of potheads 
that are stoned, that are numb to the things of God, they don't care about God, and therefore they're going to live their life and they're going to die stoned. And can you support that, Christian? Every head bow, every eye closed. We're going to just close on a word of